Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. It is good to be together. We're not back to normal. We won't be back to normal for some time. But it is good to be together here in the building. Welcome also to those who are joining us uh, online via our live stream, which we hope is working. And if it's not, we will make sure to put the video up afterwards at least. Uh, I can see we've got at least uh, one household joining us uh, by telephone audio as well, and welcome to you. I'll invite you who are here in the building to remain seated throughout our service. Uh, when we come to communion here in the building, I will serve you where you're seated, and first I will uh, drop the uh, bread into your hands, uh, and then when we come to the wine, I will place the cup of wine on the shelf just in front of you, uh, so that we, uh, we minimise contact, and I will be wearing gloves for that. And a reminder that whilst we have music this morning, and thank you Andrew, it's good to see you and hear you on the organ as well, uh, those of us who are here in the building uh, will not be singing. So if you're joining us at home, we will be relying on you to raise the roof where you are uh, by joining in the hymns. But here the words of the hymns will be dis displayed on the screens as an aid to contemplation. And if, if you feel moved to very, very quietly hum along or, or perhaps whisper the words, then I think that will be okay. But, but the general rule is no singing. We come uh, to worship. And as we have been doing uh, over these last weeks of worshiping at home, we begin by writing prayer. Uh, Our call to worship is drawn from Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And here we are. Our feet have brought us within the threshold of this hallowed place. Let peace prevail within these walls. God's peace be upon all who look to the Lord and seek a common good. Our opening hymn. We will hear played and sing. God is love. Heaven adore him.
So now let us pray. Lord God, we bring to you our prayers. You have created all things and declared them good. You have known us since before our birth and have brought us to this moment in love. In the greatness of your glory, we worship you. In the richness of your grace, we give you thanks. Lord God, we bring to you our grief. For even as some of us gather, we feel the absence of those we cannot meet with. Some who must remain at home for the time being. And some to whom we have had to say a final goodbye in the most trying of circumstances. In the pain of our loss, we cry out to you. In the depth of your compassion, we reach for your comfort. Lord God, we bring to you our guilt. You have summoned us to shape our lives around the foremost of your commandments, to love you wholeheartedly and to love our neighbours as ourselves. But we confess our sins and shortcomings, the things we have said or done or failed to say or do, which have caused harm to others and have tainted your image in us. In the acknowledgement of our wrong, we ask your forgiveness. In the assurance of your mercy, we grasp your renewal. Lord, if you like. bring to you our trust. As we offer you this time of worship, affirming that we have been made for a purpose. Speak your word of truth, God our Father, afresh into our hearts by the powerful breath of your Holy Spirit and unite us as disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The first Bible reading is Psalm 8. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bullock because of your foes, to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? mortals that you care for them. Yet you have made a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Thanks be to God. It's been a long time and it is very good to be able to gather once again at the church. So again, welcome to you all. So good to see you all here. And again, welcome to all of you who are joining us on the live stream or uh, by phone. Junior Church are also meeting uh, this morning. They're up in room one at the moment. I think there's only uh, three children and young people, and they've been uh, one or two more added to this, I'm not sure. Uh, but they are going to be looking today at the theme of reconciliation, uh, beginning with a discussion of a sculpture entitled Reconciliation that is outside Coventry Cathedral. And they're also talking about what Jesus tells us to do 
when we fall out with others and they're making fingerprint paper chains to represent those gathered together in Jesus' name. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to see uh, in a socially distanced way uh, what they've been creating uh, at the end of the service where my uh, house is back. Yeah. Allowed to congregate or linger for too long, but if the timing is just right, then maybe we'll see what they've been up to. Now, as we gather in these strange and straightened circumstances, it won't be surprising if feelings of vulnerability have come to the fore all the more so this morning. As this is something that we've been looking forward to for a long time, and yet it is far short of what we're used to. It is far from being back to normal. And that can make us feel small and scared. And it wouldn't be altogether surprising if there's even a few tears before the morning is out. Or perhaps there's an element of comfort there in hearing the words of Psalm 8 this morning. For there too, God's faithful people are brought to the point of asking, what are we that you, O oh God, are mindful of us and care for us? And yet, here we are in the place that God has appointed for us to be just a little lower than the heavens in a rank and a role that sets us apart within God's creation. So for the writer of the psalm and for those throughout the centuries who have recited it, yes, there's an acknowledgement of our smallness and our vulnerability, but let that not lead us into a spiral of sorrow. Instead, let it bring us to a fresh determination of praise with a heart that learns to rejoice again in saying, all this is your handiwork, O Lord, our sovereign. How majestic is your name in all the earth. And so we ponder that truth as the hymn is played, Make Use of Me, My God. Bible reading is from Matthew chapter 26 verses 17 to 20 and verses 26 to 29. On the first day of unleavened bread, 
and the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the 12. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. For this is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Thanks be to God. For the past few years at Trinity, in common with many other congregations in the UK and throughout the world, September has been celebrated within the church's life and worship as creation tide, the season of creation. Now at this point in human history, that's bound to involve us in some plain speaking. The scale of the climate crisis to which humanity has brought this planet cannot be overstated. It is gargantuan. Indeed, even as we wonder how our descendants will judge us for our environmental legacy. If you speak to young people today, you may find that an increasing number of them are in two minds about the wisdom of even bringing any more descendants into the world. Humanity has messed up and we're still messing up. And there's actually not much more capacity for the mess to be contained. But lest you think this season of creation is just the church being lured onto a fashionable, woke bandwagon, there is more to creation tide than chest beating and mea culpa. Because for people of faith, Creation is a statement of faith. It is the affirmation that we have a story, a story that starts with the words, in the beginning, God created. And so here at Trinity, we're once again marking the month of September as creation time. And yes, it's right that this should include for us a summons to lament and repentance for our mishandling of our God-given environment and a call to action in changing our unsustainable ways. At the same time though, I think creation tide at its best should be a time also of reassurance, of comfort and of hope and hopeful determination because God knows we need that now. And so today and in the coming weeks, our creation tide themes focus on the goodness that is inherent in God's creation. Next Sunday, we'll be exploring how the created universe reflects God's glory. The following week, Katrina will be guiding us to think about creation as the arena within which Jesus brings us to life. And then on the last Sunday of September, we celebrate our Harvest Festival, and we'll be saying more about how that will work a bit nearer the time. Clearly, it can't quite be the sort of Harvest Festival that uh, we've all become accustomed to. And for today, for today, this first Sunday of Creation Tide and our first Sunday worshiping back in the church, as a congregation. Today, our theme is made for a purpose. Now that's more than just a motivational soundbite. It is a truth that is at the heart of our faith. But there may be much in this cosmos that is beyond our understanding or our reasoning. And there may be much 
in this fractured and hurting world that causes us to cry out why and how long. And yet, we affirm that God created. And the work of God's fingers, as our first reading, Psalm 8, puts it, is not subject to randomness or capriciousness. No, God said, let there be. And God saw that it was good, as it is written in Genesis chapter 1. And so it is that in his final few hours with his friends before his arrest and crucifixion, Jesus doesn't deliver a sermon. Instead, he gives them a meal. He takes created things and hallows them with a purpose, reminding his disciples in every generation that we too are created things and our createdness matters. And it's significant that his last supper which gives us the template for the Lord's Supper, the communion which we come to celebrate today, is presented in the Gospels as a Passover meal. For those of us who are subscribers to the daily devotions, email and podcast from the United Reformed Church, have in recent weeks been reading or listening to the story from the book of Exodus, in which God sends upon Egypt plague after plague until Pharaoh will release the Israelite slaves. And yet in which every time it is written that God hardened Pharaoh's heart to say no. Those plagues reach a terrible culmination, the death of all Egypt's firstborn, whilst the Israelite households are spared. The origin of the Passover meal, a meal that celebrates freedom, but cannot overlook suffering and mortality and brokenness. And Jesus takes and transfigures the Passover meal and the Passover story, bringing it to a fulfillment in his own coming sacrifice, the death of the firstborn in order to redeem and save. And just as we struggle to comprehend the fullness of what made the cross of Jesus inevitable, and just as we can't find an explanation why God would choose to harden Pharaoh's heart against God's own agenda, equally, we can't pretend to explain why a world created as good can contain within it the deadly potency of plague and pandemic. Yet even so, the words of our scriptures and the experience of our sacrament together sing out in unison defiantly that God can draw together all created things and deploy them anew towards God's good purpose of salvation. So it seems to me that just as Passover holds together things that are cherished, and things that are bitter and painful. Our communion must likewise make room for both the triumph and the tragedy, and bring these all to the table. And so in obedience and in gratitude and in wonder, we come. Small and overwhelmed as we are, we come. Here in the church, or in our homes, we come. So let our coming be a pledge that whilst we won't always understand God's ways, we will believe and trust God's purpose for which we are made. A purpose that cries out, O oh Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth.
And as we come, Lord, says, welcome. Amen. So now Pam will lead us in our prayers of concern. Loving, caring God, we bring to you our concerns for the world and its people, and ask that our prayers are heard over the noise and chaos of busy lives and relentless movements. May these few minutes of calm enable us to pause and reflect as we place ourselves and our worries into your hands. We pray for all those who have had to flee from their homes and countries because of war persecution or poverty, and for those who are unable to escape and face abuse and terror and lives filled with pain and fear. Give comfort to the abused and speak to the hearts of the losers, and let the light that is Jesus Christ shine in the darkness. We bring before you all those areas where disaster or political upheaval is adding to the challenge of dealing with COVID-19. We think especially of Ethiopia, Somalia, Uganda, Sudan, and Beirut, where millions are displaced and facing an uncertain future. Give wisdom and compassion to political leaders, courage and fortitude to the people seeking justice for their fellow citizens, and bless all those working to protect and care for those who are homeless, brave, hungry, at risk, ill disadvantage in need of compassion. As pupils and students continue to return to schools and colleges, we ask your blessing for all those who work in education, caring for and nurturing children and young people. Give them the strength and patience to cope with the extra responsibility and challenges of the pandemic and abroad, and protect them and their charges, and keep them healthy and safe, both physically and mentally. We ask you to bless all of those who we continue to rely on during this uncertain time. The carers, paid and unpaid, the shop workers and delivery drivers, doctors, nurses, ancillary staff, cleaners, postal workers, charities, volunteers, and the many others who are helping to keep us going. During this week, which leads to the last night of the proms, we pray for all those working in the arts and music who face a very uncertain future with little live theatre or concerts. We thank you for the immeasurable beauty and joy the arts bring to our lives and ask you to safeguard all those whose livelihoods depend on you. And in a moment of quiet, we bring our own prayers and concerns to you. Lord God, we are so grateful We've been able to worship here at Trinity today, but we are conscious that there are many of our fellowship who have not been able to join us. We ask that you bless and comfort all those who have been unable to join us here today for whatever reason. We miss them, and we long to see them again, and to be able to share in the fullness of our Christian lives together. Until that time, let your Holy Spirit hold us inseparable and the family of believers and keep us all safe until we can finally be united again. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Today and in the uh, coming weeks, our offertory won't be taken up at this point in the service, but it will be by means of a retiring collection. Um, but in anticipation of that retiring collection, uh, I invite you to call to mind your offering. And likewise, if you're joining us at home, this is the moment to be uh, calling to mind your offering as we share in the offertory prayer. And also if you're at home and you have bread and wine ready for communion, then this would be the time to uncover it. We share in the prayer. Almighty and most merciful God, out of the fullness of your gifts, we bring before you our gifts and our lives. Blessed be your holy name forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the communion hymn. Let us break bread together in the Lord. Jesus shared a meal with his disciples and taught them to remember him by it always. Today, we are the disciples of Jesus. And so we obey his command, follow his example, and respond to his invitation. The summons comes to us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the beginning, O Lord, your spirit brooded over the waters of chaos and at your bidding danced creation into being. You made all things, setting their bounds in goodness and shaped humankind in your own image, clothing us in splendor 
and entrusting the care of the earth into our hands. When your people cried out from their slavery, you heard us and moved heaven and earth to deliver us. And when we forgot your work of liberation and became ourselves oppressors, you saw our injustice and inspired the fury of prophets to call us back to you. And in due time, your eternal word, present from before the beginning, took flesh and took up residence among us, declaring your kingdom to be at hand. Therefore, with all the company of heaven, and with all your people of all places and times, we join in the proclamation of your greatness and sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Nice. As Jesus has taught us, that as we see him, Father, we see you. In his arms outstretched upon the cross, we see the fullness of your love for all the world. In his rising from death on the third day, we see your declaration of sin's curse set aside. In his ascension to heaven's throne, we see your gracious plan that all should be reconciled. And so we proclaim what has been revealed to us, the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Responding to Christ's invitation and command, we commit ourselves to abide in him as he abides in the Father. Therefore, come now, Holy Spirit, sent from the Father in accordance with Jesus' promise. Confirm us in all truth, seal us in all peace, and so unite us now with one another and with Christ, that our sharing in bread and wine may be a sharing in his body and his blood. Bless us with the assurance that in our gathering and in our dispersal alike, you hold us and keep us in grace and love and fellowship. And through what we do here, though what we do here is partial and incomplete, give us faithfulness to await the fullness of its consummation. As we celebrate this foretaste of the heavenly banquet which you prepare for all your beloved, may we and all your people be renewed in service and in love for the glory of your mighty name, the one holy and eternal God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy things for a holy people. We are made holy. We are made holy in Jesus Christ, God's Son, who shows us the Father and promises us the Spirit. So let us share in this sacrament, both here in the church and at home. Please wait until all have been served so that at my signal we may consume together.
body of Christ broken for us. blood of Christ poured out for us. We pray together. Gracious God, may the love which meets us here strengthen us until the day when all your children may gather before you. Amen.
And so let us go now, strengthened by grace, held in love, and nurtured through fellowship to do God's will and to be God's people. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and among all who are dear to you, whether near or far, this day and always. Amen. Our service is at an end. Thank you for sharing with us in it, for sharing with us in worship. The stewards will direct out of the building those of us who are here row by row. I look forward to seeing you again as soon as it's possible to do so. God bless you.